In this part, we will learn how to draw series parallel graphs based on the series parallel decomposition that we learned about in the previous part. First, what kind of drawing conventions and drawing aesthetics would we like? We would like our drawing to be planar. We want all those edges to be straight line and we want them to be directed upwards. And the aesthetics we want to optimize is, again, the area and also we would like to have some symmetries. How can we do this? We again want to use a divide and conquer algorithm and we want to make use of the decomposition tree that we just defined. Our goal is that at every step we want to draw the graph G inside a right angled isosceles bounding triangle. So we have a triangle like this and all the vertices have to line inside this triangle. In the base case, we just have a Q-node, and those are very easy, it's just an edge, so clearly they lie inside such a triangle. In the divide step, no matter if we have a series or a parallel composition, we always get two subgraphs, and we draw those recursively inside those right-angled isosceles bounding triangles. In the conquer step, we have to defer between an S-node and a P-node. Let's do the S-node first. Can you combine these two drawings to a new drawing that has all our properties? This is actually quite easy. We just place these two triangles above each other and then we can draw a new triangle around those. How about the P-nodes? Can you do the same here? There we would want to place those two next to each other. But now it's a bit more tricky than before. We want to place a triangle around the whole drawing, and, but then we have to identify these two vertices and these two vertices, so they have to be placed at the same position, which is this one and this one here. So actually we have to move the vertices down here and the vertices up there. Does this work, or do you see any problem? Well, if we assume that this here is a single edge, after we move this vertex here and this vertex there, that whole edge would be drawn here straight through the orange edge. So we have overlapping edges. And that's not something that we want at all. It's not planar and even worse, overlaps are usually completely forbidden. So somehow we have to fix this. And for that, we can change the embedding. If we have somewhere in a parallel composition a single edge, we move it all the way to the right. So that is the rightmost here, and it is not a problem if we have the straight line edge from S to T. But this alone is not enough to solve all the problems of our parallel composition. But this is not the only problematic case, and this is not the only problem that can happen during this parallel composition. So how exactly do we want to make sure that we don't get any crossings? First of all, we will assume that we place these two triangles so that they touch. Now what bad can happen? Let's say this vertex here is a neighbor of the source. If we move the source to S, then this edge would go through the orange triangle. And then we cannot make sure that the drawing stays planar because we don't really know what's going on here. The only thing we know is that everything lies inside the triangle. So we have to make sure that all these edges will stay outside. However, we can easily fix this by moving the orange triangle slightly up, so that the touching point is here at this vertex. And now this lies completely in empty space and we don't have a problem. In general, we can say, if we look at the neighbors of the source and the target of the green graph, and we pick the rightmost of both of these, then we can look at the diagonal through these vertices. And we want to make sure that the orange tree lies completely above this diagonal and below this diagonal. This can easily be done. These vertices lie on the vertical between the source and the target, so the rightmost neighbor of the target has to lie above the rightmost neighbor of the source, or at the same point. If it lies above, then we have some room where we can move the orange triangle. If they are the same vertex, then this exactly gives us the position where the orange triangle has to lie. So for these we don't have a problem, we can just draw the connection inside this quadrilateral and we know that it's planar. 
But what about the other neighbors? Let's say there's another neighbor of the source here. And now, if I draw this connection, then again I have a problem. Because there is probably a path from this vertex to this vertex using just vertical segments. And then we get a crossing between this edge and those green edges. And to solve this type of crossing, we just make sure that it cannot happen. So we will assume the following. If we have any neighbor of S in our drawing, and we look at the cone that's defined by the vertical and this diagonal here, then there cannot be any other vertex inside this than S. So in this case here, if we look at this cone, this vertex would lie inside. So this is not allowed. And if we make sure that this cannot happen, so this vertex lies up here, then we again can draw this edge and everything is fine. It cannot cross anything else in here because there are only edges that are incident to the source of the green graph. And this moved here, so they all stay planar and everything is fine. And actually this condition is preserved during the induction step. So let's have a quick look at our steps. In the base case, it's pretty clear because S is the only vertex left except T. In the series composition, all the neighbors of S lie here in the green graph. The condition held before, there are no new vertices down here, so clearly the condition holds after. And in the parallel decomposition, well, we have neighbors of S in the orange graph. It held before, there are no new vertices here, so for the orange vertices it's fine. And there are neighbors here in the green graph. For those, also the condition held before. That means that for each of these vertices, nobody else was inside this cone. We only moved S away, so there cannot be another green vertex inside the cone. There can only be an orange one. But how can we have an orange vertex in this cone? If we look here, we moved the orange one such that it lies completely above the cone of the rightmost. If there would be a vertex in a cone of someone that's not the rightmost, then it would also contain the rightmost vertex in its cone, which is a contradiction to our assumption that it held before. So we are sure that this condition will always hold throughout our algorithm. We don't even have to change it. So this situation cannot occur and we get a planar drawing. This gives us our result. If we have a serious parallel graph and we are allowed to change the embedding, then we get a drawing that is upward and a straight line drawing with area in order of n squared. We have again isomorphic components have congruent drawings up to translation and the drawing can be computed in linear time. I will not talk about this one here, but we briefly want to make sure that these two lines are correct. How do we do the whole thing in linear time? Well, we go through our decomposition tree. Our decomposition tree, how many nodes can it have? Every leaf has an edge, we have a linear number of edges, and since it is a binary search tree, it has a linear number of nodes. And for every node, what we are doing here can clearly be done in constant time, so we have our linear time algorithm. What about the area? Let's have a look. I only want to see how large the height is. Here in the series composition, we just add up the height of both triangles. In the parallel composition, if we really make sure that the green and the orange triangle touch, then what we add here and here is exactly the same as what we have here and here. So again, the length from S to T is exactly the length from S to T here and the length of S to T here. So we just add those up. That means in every composition, we only add up the heights of the two different subgraphs. So the whole height of the drawing is just the sum of the heights of all those base edges of the Q nodes. And here we can clearly draw it with a length of one. So the height of this whole drawing is n, and the width, since this is a triangle, then is at most n over 2. So the resulting drawing area is quadratic. 
Here we are allowed to change the embedding. However, sometimes for serious parallel graphs the embedding is important. You want to keep the orientation of all the edges. However, if we are, have a fixed embedding, then we cannot keep this quadratic area. And in fact, Bertolassi et al. showed that we require exponential area. So there exists for every n a 2n vertex series parallel graph such that any upward planar drawing of it that respects the embedding requires omega of 4 to the n area. How do we build this graph? In the base case, our g0 is just an edge. If we already created some graph gn, then we can build our graph gn plus 1 from it by adding two more vertices the new source Sn plus 1 and a new target Tn plus 1. And we add these four edges, the source to the old source and to the new target, from the old source to the new target, and from the old sink to the new sink. Now how can we prove that this gives us exponential area? Let's assume we have drawn Gn in some area. It is a triangle, like as we can see here, so probably the drawing has to look like this. Not exactly, but we must have some edge here and we must have Sn minus 1 to the right of that edge. And that's enough for us. Now, where can we place these two new vertices? First, where can we place the new sink? It has to be reachable from Tn, from Sn, and from the new source. We don't know yet where that is, but it has to be reachable from these two. Now all the points reachable from Sn have to lie either here, but that would be on the wrong side because this edge has to go to the right. So it has to be lie to the right of the extension of this edge, and for Tn it has to lie above the extension of this edge. So it has to lie in this area. We can do the same thing for Sn plus 1. It has to be reachable from Sn, and it has to be reachable from this vertex. For the new source, the key part is it has to be reachable from this vertex up here, and it has to go around Gn on the left side. So wherever we place Tn plus 1 inside here, so there are some pairs of cones that we can use. We can have Tn plus 1 inside this cone, and Sn plus 1 inside this cone. But this is not fixed, we can rotate this connection. It could also lie inside this cone and this cone, for example. But that's not too important. So, for now, we just assume it is somewhere in one of these cones. And we will prove that, no matter where we place it, the area gets multiplied by at least 4. How can we do that? We just assume that these two vertices lie somewhere in these cones, and that gives us a larger triangle. And we want to prove that this larger triangle has at least four times the size of the triangle of Gn. And no matter where we place them inside these cones, it always contains this red triangle. So actually we show that the red triangle here has at least four times the size of the blue one. And this works no matter which line we take to create these two cones. How can we do that? We first take a little segment that's parallel to this edge Sn, Sn minus 1, and we place it here. This gives us a parallelogram pi. And since Gn is a triangle inside this parallelogram, the area of this parallelogram has to be at least twice the size of the blue triangle. Now what remains are these two parts here, delta 1, this triangle, and delta 2, this triangle. How can we measure how large these are? For that, we will take a line that's parallel to this line that we chose to define the orange cones. And we put it through this point here. This splits our parallelogram into two parts, the red part down here and the green part up here. Now we see we have another parallelogram that goes from this point down here, up here and up there. And that means that the size of this triangle and the size of that triangle are the same. Also, if we look down here, we can take this trapezoid and we can copy it over here. 
and this fits inside this triangle. Why is that the case? Well, here, look, we have this triangle here. And this is an exact copy of that triangle here. Because they have this, a parallel lines here, they have the same line here, and they have parallel lines here. So we can just copy this over, and then we prove that the size of triangle 1 is at least the size of pi. And that gives us that 2 times the size of pi is at most the area of this triangle, which is at most the area of our graph gn plus 1. So the area gets multiplied by at least 4 going to this next step. That's all I want to tell you about trees and serious parallel graphs for now. Next week we will have the first of three lectures about straight line drawing of planar graphs. And in particular we will have a look at the barycentric method and at force directed algorithms. Thank you for watching and see you next week.